Hello everyone, I'm Erfan at Gamma Studios, a developer on Unreal Engine. Today I'm going to show you how we can add a new item to our inventory system for your ease of access. In order to do that, we have to prepare our static mesh for our item. I've prepared my own and then I just click import here and then select this file. It's called static mesh bottle. I just add it here and then click import. Just ignore these messages, just close it. And then after that, you delete the extra material that has been created. Then you go to the zombie folder, blueprints, inventory, and the DT underscore items data. You press add here. And then over here, you add the item that you want. You click here, you add your name, but you need to have your BP prefix. So you, you type in BP underscore inventory bottle, for instance. After that, you have your characteristics here, so you can do whatever you want with the added item. For example, the usage, add here, add armor, nothing, battery or increased backpack we just we just select add hill here then you can you have some additional options for instance it can be sold uh, use button active just drop button being active or not you type in the the name and then the details that you want any anything that you want it's and it's easy to adjust the price, you can also enter the price that you want, your desired price, the maximum amounts in your slot in the inventory system. So how many is gonna, gonna be in, in the slot, for instance, 10. You can also set the store stack size for the buy button or selling. And then over here, you, you can select the image the meshes just add your mesh here find a mesh here by, by just typing sm and then underscore when this is a bottle we don't have an image here but just 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 to give you a demonstration just just an example i'm just gonna like you know put this headshot uh image right here just prepare your own texture and just like you know select it here you save it. Just you just copy this name. This is an easier trick. You go here. You go to pickups. You press on right click the blueprint class. Search for BP inventory item. You select it, and then you just copy and paste the name that we got from from that section. We open it, you select the mesh here, the SM underscore bottle, we bring the mesh here, and then you can select the image, choose the texture that you want, the headshot that we just talked about, for instance. If you don't see the, the variable that you want, make sure to uh, have this checkbox on. This says show inherited variables. That's, that's the reason we have them here. If it's unchecked, then they'll be hidden. And then again, just to show you when it shows the variables, and then you set it the way you want. And then you press compile, save it. You bring the bottle, just gonna drag and drop real easy. You click on the bottle that you want, select the amount. Just gonna have like we one over here, just the one bottle, just just for now, just to show you. And then you you play from there. Ah, just one sec, I forgot to check something. You go back here, you open the blueprint and there object mesh. Don't forget these check boxes, guys. You block all of them. 
this checkbox and then just ignore the pawn checkbox and then back to compiling and then and then there you can see we have the bottle over there and then you can press E okay back to another section of our tutorial I'm just gonna tell you how you can add your customized weapon any custom weapon to this project first things first you need to prepare your the skeletal mesh of your gun I've already got one in my desktop so you come here you press import I've got a mouser right here don't forget this is the import section back to where I wanted to get the import from the imported file from you click the mouser and then the skeleton section must be empty and none should be selected you after the import you'll see a message log and you're just gonna ignore that don't worry about it guys just just gonna close these tabs after that and you go to blueprints you go to weapon and the pistol section you can click on BP pistol and then you create a child from a blueprint class and don't forget the prefixes BP underscore that we just talked about the mouser and then you press enter the name the name is it the naming system is important and don't use any extra characters after that you open it and then select the weapon mesh in the drop down you add your weapon the mouser and then you compile and then you save then you just close the tab and then find your own the main skeleton so i use meta human so i'm just going to search meta human right here this is the meta human skeleton you can see in the apprentices so it's just a skeleton which is obvious in the skeleton tree you can search for socket list of sockets you can just duplicate from one of the weapons that are already available. So I'm just going to use the dead shots, which is one of the types of the weapons that you provided. And then you click right, you copy the socket. And then on the hand underscore R, you paste the sockets. After that, you use a name. Try an easy name, so it'll be easy to remember and easy to remember in the future. So we're going to just use it again. I'm just going to type down the mouser, the mouser socket. The capitals, the, uh, the lowercase, uppercase is important, something which you guys are already aware of. And then when I type in, go back to the tutorial map. I'm going to go and find my Mauser skeleton mesh, skeletal mesh. Right click on it. We need some sockets here. That we can add from another default weapon. I'm just going to use the dead shot. Just just type in sk sk underscore sorry dead shots yeah you click right you copy the selected sockets paste it in your own on your own weapon you paste it then you can right click copy the selected and then paste the sockets again and make the dead shots and then copy the selected sockets and then again you paste again the copy you already know just gonna 
Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. The bolt. The slider. Basically all the characteristics that we just typed in here. The hammer. And after that, you go to the tutorial map. Then you go to content zombie, the blueprints, and the weapons. You open the data weapon table. It's an, you can easily see already the data of the guns that we provided here. We want to just add the the new Mauser, so I'm just gonna add. You press F2, just to easily change the name. The previous name that you use is important, so you need to again type in Mauser. Just go there. Simple control C. And then over here, sorry, there's a table, a simple control V. And then you, you there you have it. You go in the weapon socket. You need to have the weapon, the, the, the name that you've already used in the in skeleton mesh, the mouser socket, obviously. You copy it, go back to the data table, you paste it over there. There are some different options, different variables that you can change. The damage, the accuracy parameters, the kick, the gun kick. Easy to adjust, easy to use, whatever you want. So since this is just a demonstration, just ignore whether or not a Mauser has a real characteristics. Just, just going to type in some variables. Uh, whatever suits you, basically. Over here, you can, you can see the default fire pistol. You can, you can use it here. Also, you can add your own uh, reload montage by adding your own. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you uh, the this section at the end of the video. Also, there are three other variables: the bullet trace, the particles of the bullet trace. You can add here the muzzle flash. Uh, when you fire the muzzle flash, you can set it over here. Just just to give you an example. I'm just going to use the default and that's bullet trace for muzzle flash. Uh, let's see what to use. Yeah, let's go to where is it? Where was it? Yeah, okay. Fine. Let me see. I don't know what I've named it, so let me have a look. Shell drop, not the shell drop. I don't remember the name that I put right now, but if any of you are curious, I can provide you the name later. You can add your own muzzle flash here. Just this is just a demonstration, guys. So just keep that in mind. And then you go to your tutorial map, and then you spawn your weapon on the ground. You place your weapon on the ground. Uh, let's try and see. If there's a, if there are any issues, so you press E, and then you interact, and then you have this sort of weird-looking uh, holding of the weapon. Don't worry about it. As you know, we imported some data, but we need to set some data manually. You go to your skeletal mesh. Like I said, I've used the MetaHuman. Yeah, MetaHuman. I'll go here. Just gonna go here and go to mouse socket. Just gonna drag it, drag it, and leave it to the side, and then a play mode. I'm gonna tweak with it and see how I can fix it. So what sort of changes it, it, it needs. You can see when I aim, I get this weird looking animation, which which can be used easily with MetaHuman. So you press F8. 
you can unpossess the character and you can get a better vision on how the weapon's going to be placed in the hand. By selecting the mouse socket, you select it, you press the mouse socket, and then by pressing W and E, you can select, set the location and the rotation of the right hand. So let me just rotate this to get a good angle, a good position on the character's hand. And just this. this should be a good angle. And then the placement. This, yep. Let's see. It should be okay. So it's right now it has the correct position. So you can go back to the main map. Press F8 to possess the character. You can see it still needs some adjustments. A little rotation to the top. I'm just gonna press F8 and unpossess it. Just, just, just you know, rotate it a little bit towards the back and move it a little bit to the front. This should be this should be good enough. Let's just give it another try. Just 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 to get get you guys to know how it is. Mm, still not in the right position to be honest, but you 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 got a you got a good understanding on how the system works. When you see Left hand is in the right position. You need to fix the left hand as well. In order to fix that, you go press F F11 just to you know come out for the full screen. You you need to find a weapon, the relevant skeleton. I'm gonna go to Mauser and I'm gonna click left hand socket right here. And then I'm going to change the location and rotation of this socket. So as you can see, it's not in a good position. And <clears throat> what I can do is I'm just going to close the skeletal mesh because because you, you, I think you got a good understanding of it. As I said, this is just a tutorial. To, to reject a character and change the rotation, the character goes to the idle position. Just you, you then you can forget about aiming. In the aiming position to by you know by debugging you go to animations you go to animation blueprints you see here abp underscore third person and the event graph section over here it says there's a variable here it says is aiming is set to is aiming so I'm just gonna unplug that Make sure you check that box. And then the animation will stay in the aiming position. And you go back here, just, just try it again one more time. That's what we want. Well, obviously not the complete animation, but you, you, you understand what I'm trying to say right now. 
Press F8 to eject and come to the weapon and then just go find the left hand socket. And that's just to show you guys. You select the you just recollect these nodes again. Don't forget to do that. To add your own reload or your own firing animation. You come to the animation sections, obviously. You find the... You can find these. You can dupl just simply duplicate these by pressing Control D. And then make a name for it. Don't forget the prefix, DAM, for anim animation. I'm just going to put, type in AM, reload new. And after that, you need to change the animation in, in this section. Hmm, for instance, I'm just going to use the default animation, but you can choose your own, your own animation. And I'm just going to delete these and add your own. You go to the data table in the section. You can change it to the the new one that we just placed over there. <coughs> so it goes into your new animation section. I hope you got a clear understanding of what's going on for the weapons and their animations. In this section, I'm gonna show you how zombies are triggered how zombies are spawned in the various different locations within the map we already have four zombies uh assigned in this project i'm just going to show how they're going to be spawned in the blueprint section you need two blueprints to, to be able to spawn them the zombie spawner and the zombie spawner trigger you need to place them in the map for this in, in order for this to be activated you need to select the zombie spawner and then make some changes some specific settings how many zombies you need obviously and just an example I'm just gonna type free three different zombies and then the trigger when the character gets inside that section that's how the zombies get spawned, and this is where they get spawned from. In order for it to work, you go to volumes, the nav mesh bounds volume. You place this on the ground, just right here, and then after that, just just to, just just to make this bigger, so the zombies have a bigger space to move around. And then when we check this, you get this green area. And let's start and see what happens. Oh, I forgot one thing. Let's just go back. You need this checkbox to be unchecked. It says actor hidden in game. That's how I can see where things happen. So when I, when I get into this box, as you can see, Three different zombies get spawned. Now, just to show you how you can set your quests, your checkpoints, and the chapter selection. And then you come here, in the search bar, you type quests, and you can open the data table here. You add here, you add any quest that you want over here. So what I want to do is for the character to go to a certain location. And then the way I want to set it is first things first, I'm going to just change the name. Just going to type in quest one. And don't remember not to delete quest zero. When going back to quest one. And then you got the types of quests that you want, locational, kills, 
No, the options. And then in the quest quest detail, um, so I'm going to type, go to the select selected location. Yep. And then it has, you need to, you need to place the count as one. And then just, just going to copy and paste the target same as the name and then when i go into the quest when i type in quest i see the we see the bp quest location you can just place it anywhere on the map make sure that's unchecked and then let's just start a game and see how it works let's come over here and then it says all quests are done. And this was just a locational uh, quest. I'm just gonna like, you know, show you what are the quests that we have. If you wanna add a new quest, again, you add, and then just, just type in quest two, D don't delete quest zero. Just, just, just gonna select collect here, a collect type of quest. And just, just type in to collect a battery, and then the target. Just, just a simple battery. It's gonna be our target, and then just to save this, going back to the map. Let's just find a quest again. So this, the quest that we just created. So just just to just to actually let me just put a battery. Just inventory. So I'm just 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 gonna type in battery. I'm just gonna place a battery over there. And then just gonna just gonna make sure if this is actually in a correct order. Yep, all good. And then let me go to my data table again. Just gonna check just to just make sure our battery quest name is correctly name the quest item name is battery so we need to use the same name I'm just gonna just gonna copy it go to the data table of the quests actually let me fix that so that's how you know the naming format is important so that's how you realize just to not make any mistakes and then you go here and then let's just see how it works and then i'm just going to go towards battery collect the battery and then since you've done all the quests you've checked you check box all the quests and there you have it in this section i'm just going to show you how you can add your character as you know this is a tps project a interactive tps survival game that's how that's what it's called so i'm just going to show you how you can add your third person uh character to this project i'm just going to go to over here uh just going to, in the future content i'm going to add the mannequin from sorry just the third person a third person mannequin i'm going to, just going to Add, add it to my project. You can you can obviously add your custom character. If you want to add your custom character, you have to pro provide the the IK rig for it. The mannequin that you can see here, the skeletal skeleton mesh, obviously has its own IK, and it's easy for me to retarget. And then I'm gonna go go to. BP 
sorry, underscore third person. And then I'm just going to change the character with the character that I, that any character you want. Just going to type down the SK coin, the mannequin. And then when I compile, when I see it in the viewport, you can see the changes here made in the napos. And these are some of the extra materials that can be ignored. And also you can tweak with it. Really up to you. I'm just going to ignore it here as well. And we go here. Zombie section. Yeah, actually, then just let me just click here. And then I'm going to search for the retargeter. The IK retargeter. And then I'm going to select IK rows. And then you, you obviously you need to set the name with the prefix the RTG. And I'm just going to type, type down RTG underscore rows to UE5. And then when I open it over here in the target IK rig asset, I'm just going to select the IK mannequin and then the IK for the third person. That we just saw is the IK mannequin. If you want to add your own, then you add your own character, the custom skeleton. Then obviously you have to add its own IK over here. I already used the feature content. In the target view mesh, you can just see here, sorry, typo, SK um, underscore. Yeah, and then you can set the target mesh offset, and then just just gonna save that. When I go to our animations, the animation blueprints, you can see the ABP third person over here. You, you right click on it and you retarget the animation assets. You duplicate. And then, then you select what we just type the RTG rows to UE5. You select it. The source you can see should be the same. The rows body SK rows, and then we get the all of the animations with skeletal mesh. And then you retarget it to the SKM Quinn. You can add the prefix. I can add UE underscore, sorry, UE, UE5 underscore. And then you can retarget the new name. And then you just press retarget it over here. It goes and takes all the animations and places them here on our context section. And then when you go to the BP third person in the anim class, you can set the new animations blueprints over here and type in the same thing, the UE5 underscore ABP. You compile, don't forget to compile. And then it should be working now. Just not, let's not forget something because we use the meta human. The meta human can have other skeletal mesh, like torso, legs, and feet. You need, you have to delete these extra, which is uh, attached to the main mesh. You just simply delete them by pressing the delete key. Yeah. And then you get the changes you get to see the changes in the way you want to completely. Yep, that's it. I think there was, this was a clear demonstration on how you can select and choose the characters and then do the changes that you need. So there you have it, some of the aspects that you can change in order to get your design outcome. 
And obviously the project comes in a large scale. So if you feel like we haven't covered a specific topic or if you have a certain question, just let us know. There are numerous ways to reach out to us. You can comment. Uh, you can just add a comment in this YouTube video. You can reach us out via email. That's info at gamast.com. And then you can simply just ask a question in the link on Unreal Engine Marketplace. Obviously, there's going to be a V2 version of this project. We, we are planning to modify this project, do some changes, add some stuff to make this even more interesting, make this project look more fancy and if you have any suggestions in that case we'll be happy to to hear about them i'm going to provide a documentation for this in the unreal engine marketplace in the link that is basically for the unreal engine marketplace for the project and there you can see what we've already done the roadmap what we've already done and what we are planning to do and obviously feedbacks are really deep, deeply, deeply appreciated. Also, check us, check our website out for any collaborations or you, if you have any specific projects in mind. We'll be happy to help. Thank you for uh, watching this video and hope you have a pleasant day. All the best.